Okay, so hello everyone. And thank you for joining us for this week's Small Business Essential webinar. Um, today's topic is how to, um, how to obtain business credit. Let me just make sure. Okay. Um, my name is TJ Daniels and I am the director of the Iowa Center's Women's Business Center. The Iowa Center's Women's Business Center is funded in part through a cooperative agreement with the Iowa Center, with, in, sorry, um, in, is funded in part through a cooperative agreement with the U.S. Small Business Administration. You will receive an email after this event from my colleague, Katie Hinches, thanking you for attending today's session, information on how to connect to our speaker, as well as a form to complete. Please do us a big favor and take some time to fill this form out. This information allows us to continue providing free educational programming for small business owners in Iowa. Now go ahead and take some time to locate the chat function on your Zoom screens so you can join the conversation by asking questions or adding comments. Also feel free to introduce yourself and your business in the chat and include your website or social media page so we could visit and learn more about your business and network. I've also included a handout for today. Um, Megan will reference this um, document during this session. So I have included that handout in the chat. Um, so now for a little bit of information about today's speaker. Megan Rector is a financial wellness relationship manager with Regions Bank. She has been with Regions for more than nine years. Regions believes in providing advice, guidance, and education to all organizations in the communities they serve with no cost, and Megan is a re representative for that effort. She has a passion for helping people understand their finances and meet their financial goals. She is acti actively involved in several organizations in the community. Um, thank you so much, Megan, um, for this session today. And with that, oops. You know what, let me make sure you're a co-host. <laughs> yep, I was just gonna say, can you make it where I can? I tried to share, but it says that- uh... okay. Share now. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, Perfect. the screen is yours. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Okay, so hopefully, um, and you guys can see how businesses obtain credit. Um, well, is it sharing the right screen? TJ, is it there? Is yep. it? Okay, yep. perfect. All right, so let me go ahead and get the chat pulled back up. So we're going to use the chat a lot today. And also, you can feel free to take yourself off mute uh, if you want to participate. That way, we can answer any questions that you might have or um, help with anything that you might need. We want this session to be interactive. So definitely, please let us know. You'll also have the opportunity to get, uh, because you're attending this session, we want to offer you the ability to have a Regions Banker reach out to you and talk one-on-one -on -one and provide advice, guidance, and education. So at the end, I will show you how to use the chat and you can chat just to me and provide some contact information if you would like a local banker to reach out to you. Uh, so with that, we'll go ahead and get started. We're going to talk about how businesses obtain credit. So whether whether your business is starting out or it's in its growth phase, you already know how important credit is to your business's future. So according to, um, one second here, let me get you guys all organized. So according to research in 2015, almost half of all small businesses did not apply for financing. Of those businesses, 16% stated that their reason they did not apply for financing was the belief that they would not get financing. So if you've had difficulty getting credit or if you just aren't sure where to start, this workshop will give you a good foundation for building your credit for your business. Now let's review our goals for today's workshop. You may have already approached banks or other financial institutions to apply for a loan for your business. Today, we will explore how businesses obtain credit so you can understand how to improve your odds of obtaining financing for your business needs. We will discuss credit worthiness, how to apply for credit, how to build credit, and the link between personal and business credit. Lenders often evaluate loan and credit applications based on an individual's 
or a business's credit worthiness. So let's start here. So if you go to, um, let's see, in your participants guide, it's page three, because we're gonna give you lots of good tools and resources during this session. So if you go to page three, uh, defining credit worthiness of your participants guide, it'll explain what is credit worthiness and what are the factors that lenders and creditors may use to learn about your financial history. Credit worthiness measures the ability of you and your business to borrow money and then repay a loan. If lenders and creditors think that you're likely to repay the debt, they will deem you or your business worthy of receiving credit. So before approving your application, lenders and creditors evaluate your credit worthiness based on the five C's of credit, which are five qualities that demonstrate how risky it may be for them to loan you money. Before we go to that next slide, anybody, can anybody guess maybe which, what, what some of those five C's would be? Has anybody heard of that before? Okay, if anybody has ever sat in on any of my sessions, <laughs> um, let me see. Okay, these are all some newbies. Okay. I oh, yeah, some there's some people putting in the chat, TJ, that they're trying to find the participants guide. Yep. So but we'll I'll, get I'll, that. I'll, I'll throw out a C, um, uh, character. Thank you, character, yes. So lenders consider several factors, um, but one of the main factors are the five C's. And we're gonna go over the five C's. So a common evaluation framework is right here in front of you on the screen. So capacity. So capacity is, and I'd love, I'd love to ask you all these questions, but it, it tells you on the screen. So we're gonna go through each one and explain them. So capacity is important to lenders because it shows your ability to repay debts. And it asks, so ask yourself, when you're thinking about capacity, ask yourself, do you have enough personal income and business revenue to pay your bills, existing debt and any new debt you may acquire? Has your business shown a sufficient history of profitability? And what indicators are there that profits will continue to be sufficient in the future? So that is important, not only to show accurate profit, um, but because accurate profit means you could have the ability to get a loan, right? But for those of you who went through the PPP loan process, you had to show profit to be able to take advantage of the PPP loan. So that was very important too. Now I know that goes against what accountants have typically said, you know, write off everything, you don't show a profit, then you have to pay taxes. But it, to, to be able to obtain credit and to get things like the PPP loan, you have to be able to um, show profit for your business. Because if you, like think of this in personal terms, if you were going to buy a house, and you didn't have any income, you know, on a personal level, then how it wouldn't be very likely for the bank to give you a loan, correct? So that's capacity. Capital is important to lenders because it indicates how committed you are and how much money you will lose if, it, if the business fails. So ask yourself, how much of your own money have you invested in your business? Are your assets higher than your liabilities? They want to see, we call it like skin in the game, right? They want to see that you put your own money into your business. Because if you don't believe in your business, then why should we as a financial institution? Collateral is the third C, and it's important to lenders because it provides a means to recoup funds, right? If you don't repay the loan as agreed, it, then they can take that collateral. So if you do a loan against your business, if you do a loan against the building and you don't pay, then they have the, something to take to recoup their funds. So the question to ask yourself is, do you have any assets such as a vehicle, real estate, equipment that could function as collateral? And will this credit be used to purchase assets that can be used as collateral? A lot of business owners don't realize that if you need a machine, so let's say you need you have a screen printing business and you need a machine to print on t-shirts or whatever you're doing, 
that machine can be collateral also. So it doesn't just have to be a building or a vehicle. It can also be like dentists, doctors, if they need to purchase machines for their practice or even office equipment, you can do liens against things like that. So then the other thing to consider is what is the value of the asset? So how much would that be worth? So character is number four and character is important, is important to lenders because it shows your trustworthiness and the commitment to your financial obligations. So do you have a history of paying your financial obligations in full and on time? Do you have a good track record of holding a job or managing a, pro a profitable business? And have you ever declared bankruptcy? What is one report that lenders typically use to see if to check your character? What is something that, oh, we need to pull your what report to check your character? Any guesses? You can put it in the chat or take yourself off mute. Credit report, yes, thank you. So your credit report plays a big factor in your character. And a lot of people think that business and personal are completely separate. That is not the case. When you own a business and you go to get financing, they are going to look at your personal finances, so your personal credit report and your business and your business credit report. So things that they will look at is if they have ever declared if they have ever declared bankruptcy. Oh, sorry. So to take yourself off mute, uh, down at the bottom of the screen, there's a little there's a little uh, microphone typically that you can mute and unmute. And TJ, I don't. Are they all muted, or do they have the ability to unmute if they would like? Um. It should make it a webinar. Oh, it's a webinar, not a meeting, so they don't have gotcha. the ability to take them off themselves off of mute, but I can allow you to speak. So if you raise your hand when you want to speak, I think I could allow you to talk. Awesome. So if you want to ask a question, um, just do the little hand raise. It's typically at the bottom with the little emojis um, that you can choose and you can choose your, you can choose to raise your hand. Thanks so much for bringing that up. I appreciate it. So conditions is number five, and conditions are important to lenders because they will describe how you'll use the loan, whether the economy or other external factors will affect your ability to repay the debt, and some things that you can ask yourself if you have the right conditions to get financing is, what opportunities and risks does your company face from changes in your industry? What are the trends of your industry? Are some similar companies expanding or contracting? What competitive edge does your business have? And how will your loan improve your business's profitability, efficiency, and stability? So now that you know more about the factors that lenders and creditors consider when evaluating credit worthiness, let's apply this information to a scenario. Now, before we jump into this scenario, does anybody have any questions about the five C's that we talked about? I'll give it a second because I know it takes a minute to type in the chat. Okay. So if you're if you are, if you do have the participants guide and you're following along, um, you can turn to page six and seven. If you don't have the participants guide, that's okay because we have it right here on the screen for you. So in this activity, we'll just go through this scenario and we'll learn how the five C's affected this business. So as you can see, I'll kind of read this to you so I don't have to make you guys read it. I'll skip over the, skip over the details. So Jovina is a 46-year-old entrepreneur who wants to expand her small sewing business. It's called Sew Right. She started the business as a hobby from her home and began selling to her friends and family. Two years ago, her daughter made a website for the business and sales skyrocketed. Jovina was able to start paying off her personal loans and enjoy income from the business. Jovina has three credit cards, one business and two personal. She pays herself, this is very important, she, and she pays her credit cards and her personal loans on time. She always pays more than the minimum balance, but she never, she has never paid off any debt in full. She does own a car that she has had for eight years and she rents an apartment 
And Jovina hasn't had any other employment since having children 15 years ago. So let's consider Jovina's credit worthiness here. So her, her credit history, so to speak. So which C or Cs will her credit card history affect when a lender is considering whether or not to give her money? Which one of the Cs do you think will affect, will affect that? Or which maybe, maybe there's two of the Cs. So if we consider Jovina's credit card history, um, we're going to, it's going to affect capacity and character. So remember we talked about character has a lot to do with, you know, your credit report and debt and how you pay your bills on time and capacity has to do with income and profit of your business. So the correct response and explanation would be both capacity and character may be affected. Jovina's credit history of repaying loans and credit cards on time, of course, would reflect a positive character and her capacity is limited because she has outstanding balances on her credit card. So also consider the number of assets that Jovina owns which C's or C will her asset ownership affect when a lender is considering whether or not to give her a loan? So that one's the easy one, right? What are we considering assets for? That's collateral. So the only asset Jovina owns is an eight-year-old car, at which value has li likely depreciated over time. Since she does not own any other assets to put for collateral, the number of assets she owns is likely to negatively impact her ability to get a loan. So now let's look at how my Jovina's employment history affect her credit worthiness. So that could affect her capacity because obviously her employment is, is limited before she started her business. And then how might her personal loan and debt affect her credit worthiness? This could also affect her capacity and her character as well as the amount of her capital that she is investing in her business. So now that you know more about the factors that lenders consider when evaluating credit worthiness, let's examine other considerations that may affect your credit worthiness. So if you're following along on the participants guide, it's page eight and nine. The more prepared you are when you approach a lender, the higher the likelihood that you will receive the funding you seek. You should pre be prepared to answer all the questions when you meet with the lender and fill out an application. A lender is likely to ask you questions that fall into these five broad areas. I want you to think of this as like preparing for a presentation, right? If, if you can't explain, because the lender does not know you from Adam, right? The, you walk into a bank and maybe you have a great relationship with your bank and they know you very well. Um, but most cases, you know, they're not going to know as much about your business as you do. So you have to come in and you have to explain what your business is, how you're making money, what your projections are, uh, how, how you'd be able to pay this loan back. You have to think of the things that the bankers would be considered concerned about. So here are some general questions to ask yourself about your business to prepare for applying for financing and to increase your chances of getting that financing. So when was your business incorporated? Have you invested your own funds in your business, right? If you don't believe in your business, why, why should we or why should any lender if, if you're not willing to put your money in your business? What personal or business collateral is available to secure the loan? Uh, so those are general questions to think about. Now, here are some questions about management and employees that you can think about. So what type of experience do you and your other managers have? How many employees do you have? How many full-time? How many part-time? And then what about business operations? What are some questions to think about in that regard? So what are all the products and services that your business provides? Are all of these lines of business profitable? If not, which ones are and why? Who are your clients and how many do you have? So I have a lot of experience with this because my husband has owned a business the whole time we've been together, which is more than 15 years. 
and he's had different businesses, right? He has some trucking, a trucking business. He, he makes pallets and, and brokers them and sells them. But he also, you know, has where he sells firewood and he sells toads. And so he has a bunch of different things going on. And when he needs financing, he has to be able to explain, I make this much money from trunking. I make trucking. I make this much money from pallet sales. I make this much money uh, from selling firewood. I make this much money from doing this. So he has to be able to explain out where the, where his money is coming from. That's also going to allow you to ensure that all parts of your business are making money because if he wasn't making any money on the firewood, why would he continue to do it? Or he needs to change something to make sure that he starts to make money, right? So then you got to be prepared with some financial questions for your business. So do you have two to three years of financial statements plus interim and current tax year statements? Do you have two to three years of business and personal tax returns? Remember, when you're a business owner, as much as we as much as we hate it, um, all of that is tied together: your business and your personal personal. And then, is your business profitable and for how long? So, did you just start making money six months ago, or have you made money for years? Because that's gonna that's going to add to your capacity, right? That's going to be a good thing if you can show that you've made money and been profitable for years. And then even consider some personal questions. So personal questions about personal credit history, any bankruptcies you may have had, what's your family's personal financial budget, what sources of income are available to cover your living expenses. Most lenders will provide a personal financial statement for you to fill out be as detailed as possible. Uh, for instance, my husband, like I said, he owns a business, and but that but I have a job, and we're married. I have a job that provides a steady paycheck, you know, every two weeks. So that really helps to add to our capacity uh, if he's applying for financing because his his profitability may fluctuate up and down as any business owner. But then I have a steady a steady stream of income that we can count on to cover any debts. So does that make sense? Um, and then are there any discrepancies that need to be explained, such as do you have medical collections or have you went through a divorce or anything that basically could cause questions to come up? So if you're following along on the participants guide, um, go ahead and go to page eight and nine, which is titled Other Considerations by Lenders. So it's a guide for when you are ready to meet with a lender. A lender will ask many questions to learn about your business. The good news is that the process of applying for a loan can be a great opportunity to understand your business better. So let's talk a little bit about your personal credit uh, because that's a piece of building and maintaining that good credit for you and your business. So while many lenders evaluate your business comprehensively, as we discussed, some will also, and I've changed some to most or all, will also look at your credit score as the primary indication for their decision. This is especially true for young or very small businesses. So there are two types of credit scores. There are, of course, personal credit scores and business credit scores. Unless you are a larger business, most bankers will look exclusively at your personal report and score. Your credit score is calculated by an independent agency that tracks a variety of information on your credit report. So what strategies can you use to build your personal credit? Does anybody have any tips and tools or strategies that they use to build their personal credit? There's all kinds of resources out there today. There's apps that you can use. There's uh, credit builder companies that you can use. Uh, there's, there's a lot of different things. We partner with a company called Operation Hope uh, that offers no cost credit counseling. Uh, pay, paying current debt on time. Thank you for adding that to the chat. Yes, paying your current debt on time will absolutely help your credit worthiness. Now I compare credit I compare 
repairing or building credit to losing weight, right? It does not happen overnight. It has to be over time, unfortunately, because in this world, we want everything like right now, uh, but it has to, you have to build it over time because to build your credit report that's tracking on-time payments over a history of time. So here's what you can do. Here's some strategies that you can use to build your personal credit. You can obtain a credit card. I know that sounds crazy, right? You're like, why would I get a credit card if I'm trying to build, your, build my credit? Because to build credit, you have to have credit. So a lot of people, some people have been taught it's bad to have credit and don't get a credit card and don't get loans and just pay for cash with everything. And that's great because then you don't have a lot of debt, but then you also don't have any credit. So when you go to apply for a loan, that financial institution has no way to know if you paid your bills on time. So actually getting a credit card and using it and paying it off every month in full, uh, that's the best way to build your credit. So pay your bills on time, keep your credit card balances low. Uh, I know that sounds crazy, but does, there's actually the credit card companies or your credit credit bureaus actually don't want you to max out your credit cards. It will lower your score the higher the balance you put on a credit card. So does anybody know what percentage of utilization you should try to stay under with your credit card? So if they give you a thousand dollar limit, what percentage should you try to stay under so that it doesn't negatively affect your credit? Anybody have a guess? Yeah, 30%. So 30% utilization is where you need to stay under. If you start using more of that credit card and getting closer and closer to that available limit, it will actually decrease your credit score. Uh, so I, I had that happen one Christmas you know, we, we use credit cards for everything and then we pay them off every month. And there were some really great deals and I went on a really big shopping spree, wanted to get all my Christmas done at once. And I got a notification that my credit score dropped four points because I was over that 30% utilization on my credit card. So I had always talked about it during presentations. I'd never had it happen to me until then. So it really does negatively affect your credit going over that 30% utilization. So if you have a thousand dollar limit, you can only, you should only use 300. Of course, in emergencies, you have to outweigh the effect on your credit score than needing the cash, but, but just know that that could happen. So let's look at reviewing the top reasons why credit scores go down and also review how to improve scores. So the top reasons why credit scores go down, late payments, number one, uh, collections, remember they stay on your account for seven years. Bankruptcies stay on your account for seven to 10 years. Uh, high debt compared to income, that's considered your debt to income ratio. You wanna try to keep that under 40%, which is literally your income each month divided by your uh, amount of monthly expenses. So too many recent credit card inquiries or inquiries period, because it doesn't have to be from a credit card, any charge offs uh, or collections that you may owe, and if your balances are too high. So here are some tips for improving your score. Pay all bills promptly and on time, which I know that is easier said than done. Um, Keep low balances on your credit card under 30%. Don't take on too much debt. Stay at the same job and address for a period of time. I know that sounds silly, but if you think about loan applications, it always asks you how long have you lived at your current address and how long have you uh, worked at your job? Now, why is that important? Why do you think that that matters? If you think back to those five C's, uh, which one does that help? If you've lived at your address for more than two years and you've stayed at your job for more than two years. Remember it was capacity, character, capital, collateral. So I know that sounds crazy, but that helps your character. So that shows stability. 
So if you've worked at your same job for two years and, and haven't job hopped, right? If you've lived at your same home for two years, that shows stability, right? You're stable, you have income, um, you're a good candidate for a loan. And then read and understand your credit report. Make written inquiries on items that you believe are incorrect. If you get nothing else from this presentation today, uh, nothing else. Uh, make sure you go to annualcreditreport.com and pull your credit report. Uh, it is at no cost. You can pull with each credit bureau once per year at no cost. And actually with COVID, they, they um, extended those restrictions. So you can pull it even more often at no cost. So go to annualcreditreport.com. I put the link in the chat. Uh, let me make sure I put the link in the chat to everyone. Hold on. Um, so annualcreditreport.com. And pull your credit and review it because that is the number one thing. Then who can guess? Can anybody guess what percentage of credit reports have an error on them? Anybody have a guess? It's real, it's 70. I wish it's more like 90, 90%. You have to think of all the information that's in that credit report, right? So addresses, past, um, thank you for putting that in the chat. Oh yeah, I, I just noticed I left an in off there. Uh, thank you for putting that in the chat, DJ. So annualcreditreport.com, you can go get your free credit report, but there's addresses on there. There's past employment. There's all your payment history. There's a lot of things that can be incorrect. So make sure you pull it and review it. So paying bills in full and on time is the absolute best way to build good credit. So for those of you following along in the participants guide, page 10 uh, has some good actions that you can that can help you build a stronger, stronger personal credit score. So how are business credit scores and report, reports different from personal ones? So if you go, I know we're moving along quickly on the participants guide, but if you go ahead and go to that next page on page 11, and it's on the screen for those that don't have it pulled up, your credit score and report. If you are running a new or small business, it's likely your business won't have much of a credit history. Lenders will rely on business owners' personal credit report and score when deciding whether or not to approve loans for their business. So how might a lender use a business credit score? Anybody, anybody have a guess? So it can help them decide if a business is credit worthy, right? So if we look at the business credit score, it can help us decide, can help us decide to approve or reject the loan. And it can determine whether a business is legitimate and trustworthy as well. So there are a few important differences between personal and business credit scores. These scores are calculated based on data in your credit reports, which are created by different agencies for businesses than they are for individuals. Personal credit scores range from 300 to 850. Now I know some people always say, well, my score goes up to 900. That is a different reporting a uh, reporting matrix that is used. So some credit cards and things like that will provide a score that goes up to 900. But financial institutions use the FICO scoring model that really only goes from 300 to 850. So you can access that score uh, for free at www.myfico.com. And I will put that in the chat as well. So you can, you can look at that and business credit scores range from zero to 100. So it is totally different um, than, than personal credit. So I will put the link to the Experian business website in the chat as well. So there's Dun & Bradstreet business credit uh, .dmb.com. There's Equifax, there's the Experian business credit, which I put in the chat. Um, there's a lot, like I said, there's a lot of different, there's a lot of different resources that you can use to pull your, pull your business credit. Okay, so let's talk about what's in a business credit report. 
So SEC filings, right? Business and organizational information. Then there's SEC filings, if anything is filed on your business. Then there's additional business ownership. So if you have any other owners of your business. There's also a commercial credit score, which I put the link in the chat for you to review that. And then there's the potential risk for failure. So when you're talking about a business credit score, it's going to show a potential risk for failure. So we do have a question in the chat. To add trade lines, do you always have to pay or is there a way to do that for free? That is a really good question. So adding trade lines means adding another, adding another creditor, right? So adding another piece of credit to your credit portfolio. And it, it should not cost you, uh, cost you money to do that. An example of how to do that without it costing you money is getting your business a secured credit card or even just a credit card with no fees because they're, they do exist. I know lots of people, lots of financial institutions uh, want to charge your businesses for everything, um, but there, there are business credit cards and things and financial institutions that have business credit cards that do not charge uh, for you to have that business credit card. So you can do that. You can do a, what we call a secured business loan. You know, you can put money into a bank account or a savings account for your business or a CD for your business. And then you can get a loan. You can obtain a loan uh, against that collateral, right? So that you're using collateral to build your credit. So you're putting money in a savings account or CD for your business, and then you're getting a loan against that. So there's two ways, you know, doing that business credit card or doing that secured business loan, uh, those are two ways to build, to build your credit. So another business credit score is the FICO Small Business Scoring Model, uh, SBSS score, which pulls from your personal and business, and that actually ranges from zero to 300. So you cannot, unfortunately, you can't access your business credit reports for free, but you can do so for free at Dun & Dun Bradstreet, Experian, and Equifax. And that is listed in your participants guide as well, those links and uh, phone numbers so that, you can, so that you can reference those. So some questions to ask yourself, you know, do I have a business credit card? Do I use business credit cards to make purchases? Do I have, a data universal numbering system. So that's a DUNS number. Uh, do I have a tax ID number? So making sure your business, you're not going to have a business credit score if you just run your business as a DBA corporation. So like Megan Rector doing business as Megan's Collectibles or something like that. That you wouldn't have necessarily a separate tax ID number. If your business doesn't have a separate tax ID number, then you won't have a separate business report. So, but you need those things so that you can file taxes correctly, get a business license, do credit, have credit reports or get any kind of financing that you may have. Just depends on how your business is set up. So we talked about steps to build good credit. Uh, building good credit for your business is pretty, is very similar uh, to building good credit personally. So some action steps that you might be able to take and in your participants guide, it is page 13. So it is reflect on your bill paying habits, you know, request free copies of your score, find out if your financial institution or credit card company will give you your credit score for free. If you apply for any type of loan with your financial institution, they have a copy of your credit report most likely. So reach out to them and make sure and see if you can, if you can get a copy of that. We talked about keeping your overall uh, credit cards below 30% utilization, paying your bills on time, knowing which lines of credit are the oldest and keeping them open. That's one thing we didn't talk about. Your credit score is also based on your length of credit history. So a lot, you may have heard people say, 
don't close your oldest card or don't close cards, don't close credit cards. That's bad, it's bad to close credit cards. And you might be thinking, what the heck? Like, why would it be bad, bad to close a credit card? If I don't need it, I paid it off. I want to close it. Why would that be bad? That's because if it's your oldest card, it's going to actually, it could decrease your score. For example, my first card I got, I was in college. I was 18 years old. I did not obtain any credit until I was almost 22 after that. I still have that credit card from when I was 18 um, because if I close it, it's going to shave three years off of my credit history and that could drop my score or would drop my score. So, but you got to be careful. There's some tricks to that. You got to make sure and use it. Um, like I have to use it once a year. I use it for Christmas you know, make sure I pay it off. Cause if you don't use credit cards, the creditor will actually close that card for you and just send you a letter and say, sorry, we're closing your card because creditors want to make money off of you. And if you're not using a credit card, then they are going to, then they are going to close that card. So we have a question in the chat. Can you request that your bank report to DMB? You can ask them if they do report to DMB, but there is a cost associated with Dun and Bradstreet. So I would I would think that they wouldn't be able to just either they do or they don't. Um, and you can see if they do. Um, but people pay for different reporting. So it would be hard if you worked with a financial institution that didn't report to them, probably to entice them to do it because there's a cost associated with that. Uh, you can go to businesscredit.dnb.com and you can, and I'll put that in the chat, um, and you can see if you can pull it or you can get your report from there. But like I said, financial institutions typically pay for who they pay for. Like I have a financial institution uh, in my small town that, that we use in addition to regions, of course, and they only report to Experian. They don't re even report to TransUnion and Equifax. They only report to Experian. And that's because of cost, right? It, it costs money to do, to send all that reporting. Yeah, it also costs a self-report, absolutely. So there's, there's a cost associated with that. So keeping track of, keeping track of where, where your credit score is, um, is, is complicated and sometimes costly, but definitely worth it if you want to try to get financing in the future. So you can also subscribe to a credit reporting service and ensure your information is accurate and up to date. There's tons of apps and things like that out there these days. Um, one that I'll mention that's not affiliated with regions, but I just personally use is Credit Karma. It's a good way to track your, your personal credit score and you get alerts. I mentioned earlier, I got an alert that my personal credit score had dropped four points because I went over that credit utilization around Christmas. And that's how I got that alert because I was signed up for that service. But I also make sure I go to annualcreditreport.com and pull my reports uh, at least once a year from each credit bureau. So on page 14 of your participants guide, um, there's like a, there's a checklist, uh, so to speak. So Let's see, if you're going to do a business loan application, it's also on the screen if you don't have the participants guide handy. Here's some things to look at, some things to consider. So personal credit report, personal tax returns, business tax returns, business credit report, business financial statements, um, sales contracts, that's very important. Uh, I don't, I, I always bring this up because I'm not sure if you are aware that we can, most financial institutions can loan against future contracts. So let me give you an example. So a, a construction company uh, contracted with, let's say a construction company contracted with Lowe's um, and had a contract to build a brand new subdivision in an area and Lowe's was gonna provide the materials and this contractor was gonna build the whole subdivision. Based on that contract, financial institutions can review that and potentially provide funding. So make sure you let your financial institution know if you have a contract in place to, cause that means business and that means profit and that means projections that you can do for that financial institution. So have your business license, have a business plan a business plan you can see there is, is a, it's a plus, it's not required, 
Um, but I like to think of it as this, be able to just tell the business of your story and be prepared with, you know, if you're, if you're making X amount of dollars per month now, this is my plan to expand. This is my plan to increase. This is how I'm going to use this financing. This financing is going to allow me to expand my profit, to expand my business, to grow my business. So there are, um, so there are other financing ways that you can use besides traditional banks and financing institutions. The SBA is a really good, is a really good organization, the Small Business Administration. So let's talk about what is SBA financing. So an SBA loan is a government guaranteed loan program from the Small Business Administration. It's offered by banks that participate in SBA financing programs. These loans are partially financed by the SBA and help borrowers who may not qualify for traditional loans. So what are the characteristics of an SBA loan? And these loans are partially financed by the SBA and partially financed by the financial institution. So certain lenders work with the SBA, Regions is one of them. We partner with the SBA. So we can help borrowers who may not qualify for traditional loans because we have an SBA arm. And as you guys know, if you went through the PPP process, SBA helped with that as well. So what are some things you would use an SBA loan for any business related purpose from working capital, equipment purchases, even debt refinancing? Uh, different loan programs have different purposes, but borrow a sum that is less than your lender's minimum. That's a tip, um, a tip to get approval. So if it's a minimum, you know, there's a minimum balance or minimum loan amount of 10,000 and you wanna borrow 9,000 uh, or, if there is a maximum loan amount of 10,000, I don't borrow exactly 10, borrow nine, because that's gonna give you better approval odds if you can, if that is something that you can do. So best practices for getting an SBA loan is having a good credit score, having that strong business plan, being able to provide documentation. There are pros and cons of an SBA loan and that's on page 16 of your participants guide. You know, an, a pro is there's typically longer maturity rates or maturity dates. So maybe you can go out longer. You can go out five years. You can go out seven years. You can maybe go out 10 years, which makes your monthly payment lower. Uh, there's a lower equity requirement. Sometimes you can do as little as 10% down. There's creative loan structures. There's no balloon payments. Uh, there's closing and soft costs that can be actually rolled into your loan that you don't have to pay it outright. You have typically a designated SBA specialist and you have a short-term SBA express line of credit and applications that can be processed quickly. So those are some of the, some of the benefits, some of the pros. Now the cons are that you typically, you typically need to require collateral and it is a lengthy application and approval process. Uh, for any of you that went through the PVP process, I was helping with processing those and that did take a lot of time for some people. So now let's talk about, oh, let's go from current slide, there we go. Um, now let's talk about some SBA different loan products. So on page 17 of your handout, uh, it's going to give you a side-by-side -side comparison of a basic 7A loan program, a 504 loan program, and an SBA Express and Veterans program. So I won't take the time to read all of these. We're getting close to time, and I want to make sure we have questions at the time for questions at the end. Um, but you have that on page 17 of your handout. So some of the good things about it is if you look at the loan structure. Um, most of them, most all of them, you know, require only 10% of a down payment. So that's good for small businesses. So now let's talk about alternative sources of funding. Now there is one other way. I'm, I'm, I hope this is helpful and you didn't, you didn't know all the, all the resources that you have, or maybe you did, and this is just a nice refresher, but there are also community development financial institutions considered CDFIs. 
which are non-for-profit funding organizations. So they work at the community level. They provide business mentoring, financing, technical assistance. Um, they, they're for borrowers who may not qualify for traditional loans. Many lenders have special programming for business-owned and Native Americans, women, minority groups, and people who are economically uh, disadvantaged. So that's an cut it yeah. super duper quick because here at the Iowa Center we just got certified as a CDFI of course we have our own loan program but um we are also now a CDFI and I I had to stop because it's exciting um <laughs> yes and it's very exciting and there's a lot of red tape and a lot of work involved in getting approved to do that um so all of you that are on today uh, and getting to know that the Iowa Center is someone that you can reach out to as one of those CDFIs that can actually, you know, provide you with financing. Uh, that's that's a huge benefit to being a member of the Iowa Center. So thank you for thank you for jumping in. So in the last couple minutes, just some things to think about uh, if you are considering using a CDFI on page 20 of your handout. Uh, they partner with organizations, financial institutions to provide alternative funding. Uh, you can speak with a representative, you know, to learn more. And they, you can check them out at cdfifund.gov. I'll put that website in the chat also, because you can see the list of all the approved, all the approved lenders that are available. But who needs that when you can just talk to um, the Iowa Center? because they can help you with that. So with that, um, you know, we'll end up, we'll end. Uh, remember credit worthiness for small business. We use the five C's. If you're running a newer small business, uh, make sure and keep your credit history, your personal and your business uh, in good order. And then in order to apply for a small business credit, you may be required to provide a, a variety of legal and financial documents. Always have those ready. Be prepared. Uh, the two things, if you didn't get anything else from this session uh, that I would like you to remember are pull your credit report, business and personal, um, and then be prepared. If you want financing, talk to an expert and be prepared with what you need with a business plan, with your financials, um, because that's going to help help increase your chances. So I will stop sharing my screen and we can talk about any questions. And I'll also give you that ability to talk to request a Regions Banker uh, to reach out to you as well. So any questions? Oh, remember to raise your hand. Uh, you are muted. So remember to raise your hand, uh, the little hand emoji, the little raise hand emoji, emoji on the bottom of your screen. Uh, and TJ will take you off of mute so you can ask your question. Um, so you can ask your question out loud <laughs> instead of in the chat. Okay, so Kwanisha said, I started a logistics business and just recently got a major client. I'm working on my personal credit now, but I need to get funding now to maximize profits. I can't get in touch with any community institutions to see what my options are. Oh, yeah, so the Iowa Center would be very helpful, I would think, um, if you can talk about CDFI options. Uh, and then my other question would be, do you have a personal financial institution? Because a lot of the times if you know someone or if you bank somewhere for a while personally uh, and they know about you starting a new business, you can go in and you can talk to them and see what your options are. Because a lot of times with very new businesses, you'll have to take out personal funding to help with the business and get that off the ground. So for instance, my husband, you know, 15 years ago when we when he was starting his small business, we actually used the equity in our home, took out a line of credit on our personal home to get, because we couldn't get financing anywhere else because he was just starting his business. And it's hard for startup businesses to get financing. So we used our personal credit, took out a line of credit on our home and got him the money he needed. And that was able to sustain the business for a year or two. And then once your business is up and running for a year or two, you, 
you have, you know, you have the financials and you have the information a financial, financial institution needs to help you. So I would reach out to a banker if you know, if you have one that you know and like and trust, use them. If not, we are happy to help uh, at Regions. Because you attended this session, you get absolutely no cost, one-on-one -on -one financial advice, guidance, and education from us. There is no obligation to bank with us at all. We will just talk with you and provide you with expert guidance. Uh, all of our Regions bankers are trained in small business, so they're happy to help. We have a local one. If you do want a local Regions banker to contact you, if you would just chat uh, chat me privately your information. Um, instead of choosing to everyone, you can choose to chat to just the host and the panelist, or you can even chat to the Iowa Center. I'm sure TJ can let me know. But chat me a phone number or an email or however you would like to have a Regions Maker contact you, and we can talk through all of your options with you. We're happy to do that, and we'll be in contact within 48 hours. So by the end of the week, someone would be following up with you, if not today. Okay, any other questions? Um, we, also put, we also put some really great resources in the chat. So you can save that chat um, by clicking on the three little dots. Um, there's the little thing that looks, right where you would type in your chat message. There's a thing that looks like a piece of paper, then there's a smiley face, then there's three little dots. If you click on that, um, you, can, you can click the save chat button and then it'll save it and you can click show in folder and you can save it to your desktop so you know where to find it. And um, I do save the chats. So if anybody needs it, I will be able to um, send it to you. Um, okay, sure. so like normal, I always ask you, what is the one thing you want people to take away from this session today? Yep, one thing would be to pull your personal and business credit reports and review them for accuracy, because that's the first step to improving. And even if you already have a good score, there could potentially still be errors that you need to get taken care of that can make your score even better. So pulling those reports for your business and your personal would be my one big tip. All right, Megan, thank you so much for taking your time today to share such valuable information with our audience. And thank you to the audience for being here, engaging and asking questions. I also wanted to take a moment to share some information about one of our upcoming programs, Dream Builder, which starts February 24th. Um, Dream Builder is our signature eight week business planning course that will help you understand the ins and outs of owning and operating a small business in Iowa. Not only will you be create a thoughtful business plan, but you'll work with subject matter experts, established small business owners and a cohort of peers who will provide support as you build the foundation to launch your business. If you would like more information, please feel free to check out our website at www.theiowacenter.org or of course, feel free to email me, tjdaniels at theiowacenter.org. With that, I will close with my piece of information for us all. Love what you do and do what you love. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.